Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today I feel the need, the need for speed. If you grew up in the 80s and 90s like I did, then this was the coolest thing you've ever seen. This is a Grumman F-14 Tomcat, the premier fighter plane in the US Navy during Battleship New Jersey's last era of commission. This particular Tomcat, or is one of the ones from Top Gun, a full disclaimer, I'm not a fan of the movie Top Gun, but I absolutely love the final countdown, which also features Tomcats shooting down Japanese Zeros. If you grew up in the 80s and 90s like I did, then the Tomcat was absolutely everywhere, in media, in toys, uh, shoot. If you guys watched the Cartoon Network like I did, you would have even seen them flying it around in the SWAT Cats cartoon. Um, I've got models and uh, die-cast toys of the Tomcat in every scale you can think of. It's a really innovative design in that when it's launching or doing high-speed maneuvers, the wings fold back. It doesn't need nearly so much lift because with those huge afterburners going, it can move at high speed and that overcomes the need for lift. However, for low speed maneuvering, the swept wings will fold out to create more lift and maneuverability. Uh, so that is a, an extremely unique feature that only a handful of aircraft have done. And uh, the Tomcat has done most successfully. The Tomcat is a huge aircraft for an aircraft carrier. Uh, and thankfully the folding wings mean that you can stack a bunch of them uh, together angled against each other with the wings closed or else it would be impossible to form a full air group on a carrier. But uh, the, as a pure fighter plane, these are excellent. They were designed to carry the Phoenix missile, which I've heard a bunch of different ranges for and I'm not sure the full range has ever been uh, disclosed, but they have a range of over 100 miles. They can use onboard radars to fire those missiles off at Soviet aircraft. The whole fear during the later part of the Cold War was that the United States aircraft carriers were going to be swarmed by Soviet uh, swarms of aircraft and cruise missiles. So we had to come up with a tactic to defeat that. Aircraft carriers at that time tended to carry a couple of Sea Sparrow missiles and uh, some Phalanx close-in uh, weapon systems, but those have relatively short ammunition capacity, so you can engage the first couple missiles or aircraft that comes in, but enough of these are gonna completely overwhelm your task force's defense and get through and damage your aircraft carrier. And they don't need to sink the aircraft carrier, they just have to put a hole in the flight deck to mission kill you. And then the most powerful asset that the United States has is out of service. But if you have a couple of squadrons of Tomcats and each Tomcat can carry six Phoenix missiles and those can shoot over a hundred miles away, then you can destroy most of that swarm before it gets anywhere near their own range to launch missiles. It's absolutely absurd that an air-to-air -air missile has, has that kind of range. They also could carry Sparrows, which were another radar-guided missile. You have to paint the target. That's kind of a, a mid-range missile. Uh, so if you can keep the target painted, you can uh, launch the Sparrow and the Sparrow will ride your beam into it. And the Sidewinder, which is a close range missile, but it's a heat seeker. So that uh, if you're close enough, you can fire this off and it'll go right up the exhaust pipe of an incoming missile or aircraft. Likewise, they have countermeasures to defend themselves. Even though they're really fast and really maneuverable, they can launch chaff, just like the battleship has chaff launchers, they can launch chaff canisters that'll drop aluminum foil in the air, that'll uh, break the radar lock of incoming radar guided missiles, and they can drop flares, which will create other heat signatures that'll block the Soviet versions of uh, sidewinders so that heat seeking missiles can't find their tailpipes. I don't just love the Tomcat, I love the whole Grumman series of fighter planes that they built for the Navy. And this series predates the Iowa-class battleships 
and serves all the way through beyond the end of the Iowas. Uh, your, your first Grumman in this series is the old flying barrel, the, the, the last biplane uh, fighter that the Navy used. And then at the beginning of World War II, you have the F-4F Wildcat, and then the F-6F Hellcat, a, a much enlarged version that's responsible for shooting down 75% of the Japanese aircraft during World War II. And then you get the F-7F Tiger Cat and the F-8F Bear Cat of the Korean War era. And then all the way up to the F-14 Tomcat of the 1980s, which still flies today, believe it or not. The US Navy got rid of these uh, in the late 2000s, early 2010s, and decided to replace them all with Hornets. But Iran operates about a dozen of them that we gave to them just before the country was overthrown. The F-14 has a two-man crew, the pilot in front and the RIO in back, RIO, radio intercept officer, who is helping the pilot by uh, doing a lot of the navigating, getting radio signals, intelligence, and doing a lot of the uh, weapons programming, keeping the, the radar lock on an aircraft. Uh, he can also help the pilot by checking behind him uh, while the pilot is focusing on his maneuvering and whatnot. So a two-man air crew for a fighter is not a bad idea. Nowadays, the Hornets have uh, both single-man and two-man versions, um, while the uh, F-35 Lightning, besides possible training aircraft, only has the one-man version. However, a lot of the electronics in that modern mask that the uh, Lightning pilots have, um, or the HUD, the heads-up display, helps with uh, things that, that a second person could have done. When carrying a full armament of six Phoenix missiles, this aircraft is too heavy to land on an aircraft carrier. So if you ever launch them from a carrier with that many missiles, there better be incoming Soviet backfire aircraft or that plane's gonna have to jettison some extremely large and expensive missiles before it can land or find a land air base to go to. This Tomcat isn't the only superstar on USS Lexington. The carrier herself has been in a couple of productions, including the Michael Bay Pearl Harbor movie from uh, the early 2000s. What's your favorite aircraft carrier movie? Let us know in the comments section down below. For me, Final Countdown is not just my favorite aircraft carrier movie, it's my favorite movie of all time. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, and also from a number of other businesses and individuals like yourselves. If you'd like to support the star of this video, there's a link in the description below so you can donate to the USS Lexington. They're doing a number of amazing restoration projects on board and the ship really looks great, but they could always use some more help. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.